This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 632, 10 Financial Tips for Young Adults, by Mike Ballou with freedompathblog.com. And I am Dan, your host, and a happy Tuesday to you. This is where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs anywhere. And if you are listening in real time, it is not only Tuesday, it's also the last day of the month. And that means that we're giving away a book to someone random on our mailing list tomorrow. So now would be a great time to join. It is totally free. Just come by oldpodcast.com to sign up. And I'm gonna give you a real quick reminder about that at the end. So for now, let's not waste any time. Let's get right to our post as we optimize your life. 10 Financial Tips for Young Adults by Mike Ballou with freedompathblog.com. I don't know about you, but when I was in my 20s, financial matters were not at the top of my list. I was more concerned with graduating from college and establishing myself in life. I wanted to stand on my own two feet and become self-sufficient. I got some things right, but if I had to do it over again, I would do some things differently. In today's article, we count down the top 10 financial tips for young adults. Number 10, buy cars with cash. Maybe you drove a beater in high school and college, so you can't wait to buy your first new car. While there is something to be said about the style and reliability of a new car, you should think twice before you run out and buy one. I waited until I was 35 to buy my first new car for myself. Up until then, I bought used cars and paid for them with cash. The last thing you need as a young adult is a big car payment. Whether you buy from an individual or a dealership, take your time and shop around in order to find a good deal. The most reliable cars are Japanese four-door sedans, Corolla, Camry, Civic, or Accord. They may not be sexy, but they're very reliable. If you can find a good one that has been well-maintained, it'll provide you with years of cheap transportation. Number nine, eliminate credit card debt. You need to have a credit card to establish your credit and function in life, like renting a car or shopping online. However, it is very important that you pay your bill in full each month. Do not allow credit card debt and interest to accumulate. It will eat you alive. Keep a lid on your spending and pay the bill off every month. If you've already rung up a sizable debt, check out my article on the three keys to getting out of debt. Number eight, train for your career. Notice I didn't say go to college. College is right for some people, but for others, technical school is the best choice. Not everyone needs to go to college and the world needs mechanics and welders and carpenters. Pick a career and find out what it takes to secure a job in it. When I chose my career almost 40 years ago, I thought about what I could do and what was in demand. I read an article in my junior year of high school that said nurses and engineers were in demand. Guess what? 40 years later, they're still in demand. I determined which degree I needed and went off to college to earn it. I never understood people who go through college majoring in different things to try to find themselves. To me, that is a waste of money, time, and effort. I maintained a list of courses I needed to earn my degree and I took them, no more and no less. College is expensive. It's no place to figure out what you wanna be. Spend some time at the library or go online and research various careers. Make up your mind before you go to college. Here's how the process worked for me. I decided I wanted to earn the most money possible. I thought about becoming a doctor, but I can't stand the sight of blood. Then I thought about becoming a lawyer, but I don't like speaking in front of an audience. Then I thought about becoming an engineer. I'm good at math and science, so it seemed like a good fit for me. Number seven, stick to a budget. An important skill for anyone to learn at any stage in life is how to create a budget. In my article, How to Create a Budget, I go through the process step by step. It's important to understand where your money goes each month so you can set priorities and make adjustments where needed. Number six, start saving early. Include a line item in your budget for savings. Live beneath your means and save some money each month. It's never too early to start saving for retirement. Compound interest can work for you or against you. If you charge your credit cards up to the limit and only make the minimum payments, it will work against you. If you live beneath your means and save some money each month, it's going to work for you. Start saving early and don't stop. It's a good habit to get into. Number five, adopt a healthy lifestyle. It's true that we reap what we sow. Exercise regularly and eat right, you'll reap the benefits of good health. Don't smoke and limit your alcohol intake. You will be glad you did when you get older. 
you'll also spend a lot less on medical bills. Number four, live with roommates. The first thing I did after graduating from college was sign a lease on a one-bedroom apartment. I had lived in a fraternity for four years and was anxious to have a place of my own. Looking back, I realized I would have been better off living with roommates. Not in a fraternity house, of course, but in an apartment with two or three bedrooms. I was concerned that without the structure of the fraternity, we would argue over cleaning or food. While that might have been a legitimate concern, the financial benefits would have been worth the effort. Number three, limit student loans. In my article, The Student Loan Crisis, I chronicle how student loan debt has spiraled out of control. Student loans were never meant to pay for the entire cost of a college education. Young people today are coming out of college with student loan debt in the six figures. That is no way to start out in life. Seek other methods to fund your college education. Appeal to your parents and other relatives. Look into scholarships and grants or work your way through school. It's been done before. Think long and hard before pursuing a graduate degree. You can get a job with your bachelor's degree and earn an advanced degree while you work. Many companies will reimburse you for the cost as long as you stick around a while after you graduate. Number two, wait to get married. Soon after you graduate from college, all of your friends will start getting married. I think that is a big mistake. You are better off living a carefree lifestyle and waiting to get married. You have plenty of time to find a mate. Wait until you have established yourself before you start thinking about getting married. And with that, we have reached number one in our countdown of the top 10 financial tips for young adults, wait to have children. According to the latest figures, it costs $300,000 to raise a child in the US today. That is a lot of money, money you don't have as a young adult. I'm not saying wait until it gets medically risky to start a family, but don't rush into it. Again, you need to establish your career and finances before you think about having children. Final word. So there you have it, the top 10 financial tips for young adults. Don't you wish you knew all this when you were younger? If you know someone who might benefit from these tips, please consider sharing this article. Someday, that person might thank you. You just listened to the post titled 10 Financial Tips for Young Adults by Mike Ballou with freedompathblog.com. And as promised, just a quick reminder that we're doing another book raffle at midnight tonight. So if you wanna be part of that for free and show some support for our shows, simply come by oldpodcast.com and join the weekly newsletter. And that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Have yourself a great Tuesday if you're listening in real time. And I will see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.